now. Okay, uh, this is episode two of Arcasaur Table Talk, and I still have. I'm um, I'm Deanna, the ever-present host, and I've got with me tonight Garnet Sky and Scott, the host and dungeon master, game master, whatever you want to call it, of Arcasaur RPG. Yep. Okay, and today we're going to be talking uh, about, um, let's see, a uh, quick little update on uh, the continuing saga of Wizards of the Coast failures, I including an NPR order article, and uh, then whatever we ramble on to, and wrapping up with uh, some shout outs to some tabletop creators just like did last week at the end before our little uh stop the recording snafu outtake <laughs> for anybody who decides they want to listen to it to episode one feel free to laugh in the comments all right uh so do we want to uh go ahead and do that brief little continuing drama with the uh, Watsi and then move on or start with the article um whichever one you want to do is that's fine with me I'm just I'm just along for the ride me too okay so yeah for anyone who isn't currently a D&D Beyond subscriber, uh, I would say be happy because Wizards of the Coast is continuing to have issues in that. Uh, let's see. I think... Uh, oh, what was it? Yeah, D&D Beyond posted a... Uh, on Twitter... Oh, we're sorry. Uh, before the weekend happens, uh, you may want to just... We're, we're having some technical difficulties. You may want to download your... Uh, hiccups. May, might might want to download your uh, character sheets and other materials from our website because... Yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot of character sheet issues this weekend. Site going down. People being much more not happy. Uh, yeah. All, the, all all that good stuff. That's why I use stuff like shard. Yeah, and that's why a lot of uh OSR YouTubers are like, "Yeah, I don't have that problem. All my character sheets are on paper." Yeah, like, I, and I have I, real I, dice, so I don't have to worry about that dumb stuff. Yeah, just have have your character sheets on paper. Um, if you if you really really want to migrate your characters because it's still built in, mi migrate your characters over from D and D Beyond to Shard, or, or to, Roll uh, Twenty Foundry, roll 20, Foundry, or or there's the, a whole bunch of different places. There, there's also the new um, Alchemy Virtual Tabletop and uh. All four of them are doing a su new subscriber special of three free, free months if, if you're coming from D&D Beyond. Yeah, so I say... Im like, import your characters. Cancel... Can cancel your D&D Beyond subscription because clearly it's not going to paying staff. Yep, and if, if you... If you really want to support these places, I mean, definitely. Um, especially like Shard is what we use or what I use for um, our uh, role playing podcast. Well, I yeah, I, so. I I have a subscription too because I I did actually uh, DM a, a one shot a few a few weeks back. Yeah. And that's just, you know, with a subscription, it, it's easier to be a, a game master because you can give all your players the books 
uh, access to the books you have so that they can make their characters the way they need to. Yep. Mm. So I was messing around on Shard, and for some reason, ASMR didn't have Celestial Revelations available for me. Ah. Uh, well, I can see if I can get that fixed. Okay. Anywho. Uh, so, all right, let's uh, go ahead and move on to that article. I'm going to bring it up here on screen. That uh, actually. Hold on one second. Got to get back to the correct tab. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny tef technical difficulties. Okay, now I'm bringing it up on screen. All right, now we've got it up on screen. Uh, I will be putting a link down in the description for anyone who cares to read this after the fact. Um, since, you know, resolutions being what they are, I not wanting to completely block off your ability to see who's talking. So which part of this are we covering? Uh, I'm going to kind of highlight a few points, like the headline, it says, you know, fans said the future of Dungeons and Dragons was at risk, so they went to battle. So it's basically a, a brief overview of the whole mess, complete with, you know, the, the lovely stock imagery of, of minis on top of a book. I'm not even sure if those are the third edition or alt cover fifth edition. I think those might be third edition, but still. Third or three point five. Yeah, I mean we're we were talking about you know all the editions being at risk because OGL one zero A is a effectively Creative Commons style license for all editions of D&D, not just 5th. Well, excluding 4th because that's under a game system license because it was supposed to have a virtual tabletop. Uh, and the article writers say that, you know, no game of D&D is exactly alike. The world's characters' problems are crea created by the players at whatever table they're at with their dungeon master who is as they're saying the guide through the story and in january of 2023 the game itself became the story because a leaked version of a an update to the OGL, followed by a leaked FAQ for an old alternate draft of that leaked version got leaked, and then they put a real draft of an update. The first one was the very odorous version with the license back to wizards of the entirety of creator content reporting everything that you're planning to publish along with your gross revenues of regarding products using this leaked 1.1 and the very odorous level of royalties that would affect more than 20 a small portion of the third party creator community i mean it's it was i mean it's in the article but i yeah um no well, downs Oh, no yeah. downs. Um, the attorney with uh, Primac Rogers, which is a law firm re representing digital creatives, um, he literally said, and I quote, the royalty system combined with the license to Wizards of the Coast of the creators works effectively cut drastically into the margins of the creators 
while also giving Wizards of the Coast the ability to republish, reprint, and otherwise exploit the creator's work without any additional comp compensation or attribution. Which yeah. Literally. Now they're scamming they're... someone out of their own content. <laughs> yeah, and before they completely walked back this odorous idea and went to on uh let's see yeah january 4th um reporter with io9 through gizmodo uh linda codega reported on the initial leak of 1.1 then a leak of an uh frequently asked questions with the title of ogl 2.0 that removed the royalties but not the license back information i mean there was one creator that i saw through the youtube algorithm recommendations who's like that you know that was around this he posted his around this time point he's like they're being absolutely draconian over their IP because it's their IP. So whatever the rules are, you should just shut up and take it. Because yeah, but the these rules... attorneys that are talking about it being odorous and draconian and everything, they ha they're not IP lawyers, so they don't particularly know what they're talking about they're as much a layman as everybody else yeah that's why they always you know preface preface their stuff with this is not legal advice even if i am a lawyer this is not my specialty but you know he hit his videos more kind of is one of those that kind of aged like milk yeah. For any, any Reddit people out there. Then January 13th, uh, Wizards decided to post up a somewhat tone deaf apology on uh, D&D Beyond, which is very much an odd choice since they have a blog on the Wizards of the Coast main site where that apology tone deaf as it was, should have been posted. People meme the up really living heck out of it. Because not only was it a nat one on deception for OGL 1.1, it was a nat one for deception on, on that apology letter that wasn't really an apology. Because no wizards, you didn't win. No, and no one else said they won either at that point. Then the actual draft was published on the 18th, which was 1.2, with a follow-up survey posted once again to D&D Beyond's Twitter, not Wizards D&D's Twitter, which a lot of people are actually starting to question why they're using that as the mouthpiece to the community. But I guess they figure it's... Because they're kind of half half apologize. <clears throat> if it comes down to it, they can say, oh yes, we fully apologized. You know, it's out for everyone to see. Yeah, I guess they're they're they like... Just put it on... We, we have like more the... followers on D&D &D Beyond, so we want to get, an, get the apology to the most eyes. And the same with the survey. No, they got it to about 15,000 people and everyone told them. Yeah, no, we're not going to publish under 1.2. I was among those. I said their yeah. future looked rather bleak. If Actually, they didn't we, we, walk it back. We have, we have something that we're going to be posting under, but that's for a, a later topic in this episode. Yeah, that'll be well, for the shilling point. Yeah. No, <laughs> so I, I think it's funny that um because I'm looking at the article too and um th this is the wizards. What the heck? Is it, it their their quote for as a part of their apology is 
In addition to the language allowing us to address discriminatory and hateful conduct and clarifying the types of products OGL covers, our drafts included loyalty a royalty language designed to apply to large corporations attempting to use our OGL content. It was never our intent to impact the vast majority of the community. But yet it did impact the vast majority of the community. Yeah. That's the problem. And, and we know 1.1 wasn't a draft because uh, what one of the uh, execs over at Kickstarter said... Yeah, that 20% royalty is real. It's not our royalty, but it's real. Which just made, you know, that initial apology and calling it a draft a nat one on deception. The only real draft update is 1.2 and everybody's like yeah we don't like it yeah <sighs> and, well, and then they they, I, they put I'm up an executive producer Kyle Brink as their sacrificial scapegoat mm -hmm. for the second apology which honestly was a bit better plus tone deaf and he's going to be doing interviews with several influencers over the course of, I guess, the next few week or so. The first one's up for anybody that's going to want to do that. Uh, you'll want to search, if it's not in your YouTube algorithm feed, for anyone watching this, it's under Three Black Halflings. YouTube channel, the number three followed by Black Halflings. Some people have said it's a little softball, but he did explain that, yeah, 1.1's been under development since before he took over his position as executive producer. And everyone's pretty sure the exec in charge of digital development one chris kao or cow and last name cao is is the person potentially behind 1.1 that's why i'm saying kyle brink is the sacrificial scapegoat Let's see, and then, and, and then he said the multiple, the full week of silence was the team reacting and preparing for a response. It was, oh God, our houses are on, on fire. What do we do now? They're all angry at us. No, I kind of see it as. Oh god, the house is on fire. Maybe if we ignore it, it'll go away. I'm pretty sure that's what was going through their heads. Well, that might have been day one of not saying anything. But then they're like, okay, let's throw up a new new version without the horrible parts. Or at least the most horrible parts. But we'll include this odorous looking VTT policy. And, and and we'll throw it up with a survey. Yeah, which uh, if you read a lot of the stuff that's in the survey, it's like, uh, no, I'm disappointed. I've been using the system for so many years and I'm about to go away from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, 90% of people said, yeah, no, we're not going to use 1.2 to publish. It, it, it's not an open gaming license. It, it, it's a restrictive, unstable pile of steaming not legal document yeah yeah and they're they're not even gonna share the results of it until the 17th of well, february they, well they were intending not to share it until the 17th but out of fifteen thousand people 
way over 86% said yeah. no to pretty much everything. I mean, 90% said we'll have to change the way our business runs completely to accommodate 1.2. Yeah. I mean, to, to quote Griffin McCauley um, of the Griffin Saddlebag, um, he said people were so hesitant to believe in wizards that wizards would do something this insane for a really long time until the evidence that no, until the evidence was just so apparent that you couldn't that they could that you couldn't ignore it i think the only real way for people to feel comfortable is knowing that the people responsible are no longer able to put the peop to put the people the the creators in harm's way again yeah but see i've i've heard this over and over again with with other articles with other um interviews and stuff that like what I was saying last week of the 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 hurt and the mm -hmm. like the betrayal, I don't think they'll ever recover. I mean, they they could still be a business 40, 50 years from now, whatever. But I don't think they're gonna ever be as big as they were. No, because they they hurt, they, they, they decided hurt too many of us. I mean, they essentially took our 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 wonderful little pride and joy and put a gun to its head and said you're gonna do what we say and that they would go that far that rashly about it yeah and just and it's and then just go oh just kidding um no i have i don't have any trust in you anymore i don't have any confidence in you anymore and so a, a lot of these people, um, you know, that I've, I've been listening to or, or reading about pretty much said what I said, you know, last week that and a lot of them said it a whole lot better than I did, but that I can't, I can't put my trust and, and my own happiness towards this anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think they're gonna recover from this. They they've shot themselves in their own foot. Yeah. And they they did what Lorraine Williams of the former CEO of yeah. TSR that they you know, the people that wizards bought Dungeons and Dragons from did. She was there the all, all, all the uh, old grognards and OSR people are like, yeah, our nickname for TSR was they sue regularly. Regularly. Yeah, Can't yeah. talk. So, and you know, that, that company we went bankrupt under Lorraine Williams. And then... We have other outlets. We don't oh, yeah. have to have them. And I, I think that's that has maybe become a little thought in their little brain that, oh, no, what have we done? Because they'll just go somewhere else now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it happened when they released 4th edition. Was, you know, here's the idea. Here, you know, get you a piece of paper and a pencil and some dice and off you go. We can we can share content with each other we can talk about you know different realms or different spells or whatnot we don't need wizards of the coast to to go have our have our fun time anymore i just uh yeah they they were resting way too much on the fact that Dungeons and Dragons, much like Kleenex or Saran Wrap, has become a generic yeah. title, though they are still trademarked. All three of those still are still trademarked to their company owners, but they're considered generic. D and D is the generic of umbrella covering all tabletop gaming 
like Kleenex is the table is the generic that everyone knows facial tissues by. That's why all the off brands say facial tissue, not Kleenex, because it is still a trademark of Kimberly Clark. You know, and I mean, then... I mean, heck, when somebody gets a scratch on their on their foot or on their arm, they go and grab a band aid. Yeah, even though it's, it's an adhesive pl- bandage, everybody says band aid because yeah. that's what's now common in our vernacular as a self adhesive bandage. Yes. Yeah. And they're relying on being the generic, the default, the go to. And they've been relying on it for since for the last 23 years. Their um I- and their popularity exploded when Geek and Sundry team critical role with Matthew Mercer as the game master switched his homebrew that he was doing a real play campaign with his voice actor friends who love hamming it up. Switch from Pathfinder 1st edition to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Their popular D&D's popularity exploded with that and a lot of YouTube content creators their popularity rose with them. Driving sales for stuff and then they tried translating Spelljammer from 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons into 5th edition and that didn't go over so well. But yeah, no. the overwhelming negative response to the OGL 1.2 survey that was supposed to remain open until February 3rd closed on January 27th with a yeah, here here's the numbers uh, that we got. Over 15,000 people said yeah, we don't want anything to do with this. But we would l- like you to Throw the entire SR, every SRD into Creative Commons, not just 5.1, to make sure that yeah, but everyone I, I, is protected from wizards trying to pull a dumb again. Yeah, but there are so many of us that aren't even playing 5. Point whatever. Yeah, fifth edition. But- you know, we're we're not we're not even following their world or their guidelines or their gods where where well most of the, the gods the, the aren't whole... even theirs to begin with <laughs> yeah but it's like the the just the st- just the flavor tax on the stamp thing... st- st- that blocks for them yeah and the art. I mean, it's, that's literally all my, the audio to in the my gods. opinion it kind of i hope i don't step on legal any toes but a lot of it is like legos mm. the the way my brain is processing this giant pile of mess is it's it's just a pile of legos anyone can walk in and start playing they can build it create um have terrain have you know actors have creatures and their imagination can you know go 500 miles an hour and take off with them and it's fantastic and it's different for each person that's playing you know three kids in a in a you know little kiddie pool full of legos they're gonna have fun for hours because their little imaginations are going nuts yeah yes there are packs that you can buy that have instructions. Um, my son actually pointed out one yesterday that's like $150. And it has all of the pieces and it has the directions of how to build this amazing ship. And it's cool and it's awesome. And he wants it so bad. And I'm thinking, dude, 
you have like 800 pounds of Legos in multiple boxes in your closet. You can just go on the you Lego have... website and download the instructions. I know. And so it's like... Yes, I could understand, you know, here's this cool thing, and here's a, the whole set, and you can have the backgrounds, and you can have the players, and you can have the creatures, and it's great. But at the end of this insane process, you just have a giant bucket of Legos, <laughs> and anybody can come in and build what they want, build what they need, build what their imagination is going to do this hour and a half. Yeah, I've and seen a lot. And fun with it. Yeah. Okay, well then somebody comes in and says Legos are now all banned. What are you going to do? Ignore them. Well, there's <laughs> other companies, there's other, you know, people that it's not Lego brand, but it's the same blocks. Or close enough and to be indistinguishable. Yeah, yeah. And, and China so doesn't I, care about copyrights. <laughs> yeah, but... I think I think it kind of just it the backlash finally smacked him in the face of oh crap they don't need us. Yep. Yeah, cuz a lot of and people I, I... A, a lot of people were reminding them of a certain Gary Gygax quote in one of the uh, yeah. Dragon magazines back when before he got forced out of TSR which was Really hope, I, I'm paraphrasing, I, I hope they, these people don't remember that once they have the rules, they don't need the company. Because yeah. they are the creators of their stories. Our roles no, um, have only been ever just a guideline. Oh yeah. Now, um, I, I know I'm not the host um, yes. Not not trying to to usurp your authority, but I just had something come across my screen while I was you know trolling around the internet, and uh -huh. uh, I linked it to you. I understand it is Polygon there, eh. but um, I absolutely love it because um, it's and I I linked it in our Discord chat. Um, D and D's OGL controversy turbo. Oh yes. sales of Virtually every <laughs> other tabletop RPG. Yes, I I, my... I I I saw a meme. It says Paizo Employee of the Month, and it's a picture of the Wizards of the Coast logo. <laughs> yeah. Though they're um, they're yeah. using the the set of images of Wolverine staring at Jean Grey, but they replaced Wolverine's face with the Paizo logo and Jean yep. with the Wizards logo and, and Employee of the Month. <laughs> but the uh, second, yeah. The second... So Wizards has been Employee of the Month for many third party creators. Yep, second paragraph, and it says, at least one tabletop gaming publisher, Cobalt Press, which, by the way, I love them. Oh, yes. Tells Polygon I, I'm, that its sales I'm, quadrupled in January. Oh, yes. Games, oh, yeah. Chaosium. Games, hand, said it's been the best month of sales since 2003. Nearly every other publisher that responded to our request for data reported that at least double the expected sales, with some selling through nearly... A, uh, with some selling through nearly an entire year's worth of stock in less than three weeks. Uh, yeah, that would be Paizo eight months of stock in two weeks. Um, I'm sure you heard the joke several times over. Magpie Games co-founder and CEO Mark uh, Mark Diaz Truman wrote Polygon. Us indie designers have spent the last 20 years trying to get D&D fans to try something different. And Wizards of the Coast has gotten it done for us in one month. Less than yeah. a month. <laughs> yeah. Though I, I will say, so. it, yeah, one month if you count when OGL 1.1 was sent out, which was according to some of the early reporting of the leak around December 21st, you know, right before Christmas. That no, That if is just... If if any of you hey, want to get into a different role playing system than fifth edition, I highly suggest right now going over to Humble Bundle because right now they've oh, yeah. got pa oh, the yeah. Pathfinder books, like yes. almost you, all of them you, in a package 
for like twenty five bucks. Yeah, you can yeah. get. Want to get oh, yeah. started and get and, and, start, and start on Seriously. on the Foundry VTT. Yes, do yep. the twenty five dollar level. But as uh, Tankar's Tavern has said, if you just do the five dollar level, you're gonna get the beginner's box. That's got everything you need, and for the rest, you can go to the Archive of Nethys. They've updated their servers to handle a larger load. It's been a yeah, little painful so, for them. As, so, um, but mostly for their IT guys. Yeah, so, uh, Wiring uh, new Deanna, server banks. Deanna, be sure to, to link this article as well so people can just read through it because it's basically Yeah, and, just... uh, and I'll put a link to the archive of Nethys for anyone who wants to take a look at that. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just, I just had a vision of in the cafeteria and the kid who sat in like chocolate pudding stands up and realizes that he has um you know what looks like poop all down his backside and everyone in the cafeteria just pointing and laughing <laughs> that, that it's 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 what it's kind of become <clears throat> you know every yeah but I mean, I mean, else that donates and and gives and provides creator information to the world of D and D players, they're all making bank off of this moron <laughs> who did a face plant in the cafeteria. And, and the, the cafeteria like, trash oh, can. Wait, nobody saw that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we did, did. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You... That's just what popped into my head. Of like, okay, no, 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 no. Good, good, Goodman, going... <laughs> good, Goodman Games had the most positive outlook. They they said that this ja that January 2023 has been the best sales month they've had ever and they can't ever. thank yeah. wizards of the coast enough for what they did <laughs> they're like oh here's one yeah their in screw up is our week. silver lining yeah in one week that it had sold through an eight month supply yeah that was what they would re what they would regularly sell you know, their standard, you know, monthly quotas, whatever. Yeah, in one week, they were able mm -hmm. to, to outsource an eight-month supply. Yeah. Yep, that's, because uh, everybody's that's, that's just laughing at them. Yep, that's that's Paizo, the publisher of Pathfinder and Starfinder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're... And, um, they're also, uh, also um, that was just for the Pathfinder support. That's mainly the Pathfinder core rule book. Um, Chowsum, yeah. uh publishers of Call of Cthulhu, likewise, uh, said sold through months of stock. Yes, and has yeah. multiple new shipments of books on the way for manufacturing for its, from its manufacturing partners to fill more sales. Yes, yeah. so please be patient <laughs> with Chaosium. Or Chaosium, sorry. Yes, uh, Chaosium. It, it Chaosium is the I believe official IP owners of uh, uh -huh. Cthulhu. Oh, Cthulhu. Well, no, Cthulhu related materials because in OGL 1.0a they made that product identity not open game content, which Creative Commons uh four by <laughs> four point oh by uh it's the most similar to 10a where derivative forks can close out their content from being used in common by the upstream. Yep. And, and in this here, case, here, that's Wizards of the Coast with 5.1 SRD. Yep, here you go, Deanna. Um, you'll, yes. you'll probably, you'll probably, or not Deanna, um, Garnet, you'll, you'll probably laugh at this. Drilling down into January itself, co-founder Fred Hicks exactly. said in an email, you can see exactly the day exactly. they face-planted. Face my planted. birthday, thank you guys. 
and how it elevated every day every since. Every day since. I know. I just saw that and I was like, that is <laughs> and, and that's all, all, in, all, all in the Polygon me. article? Oh my gosh. No, that's, that's in the Polygon article. Okay, wow. That <laughs> Further down. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will have to uh, give an actual read to that at a later point. That is hilarious. That is great. That is hilarious. You can see exactly the day they face planted yeah, in our that, sales it's, it's, it's fred hicks's birthday <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm gonna say that, that this year was his best birthday yet heck yeah I, I mean the only birthdays that'll probably top it are are the ones that ha have years relating to um spousal uh you know like when he got married, his kids, possibly births of grandkids. No, nah, it's it's Hasbro face planning uh, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, with themselves into the back of the turd dumpster. Though I I do think it's it's great that this controversy over. I, OGL... I'm kind of amazed nobody decided to use that moment in a uh, Back to the Future when Biff's car got loaded with horse poo. Yeah, but uh, I because that's I about believe, what they did to themselves. I, I still believe that, that it's great that this controversy over OGL um, was the best possible scenario for Zine Quest and Zine Month. Um, it's uh, two creator focused events that help bring tiny pamphlet sized TTRPG experiences to the world, and those events run through the month of February. So this is just right on the money. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be just, be the best sales month for a lot of small creators. Yep. And and you know, the I rest just, of this you know, year and and who knows what uh 1D&D &D is going to look like if they're even going to release it next year. I don't know. I don't know because of this ma because... massive face plant. Well, but it's just oh, let, let, Let's see what what they're... their stock looks like now. See what 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 has happened is big market said, oh well we're gonna, you know, label this how we want to and you can only buy it from us. Hmm. Well, some of us that, you know, get it naturally sourced, we have it growing in our backyards. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go that far, you know, and push that hard about it, then I don't have to buy your stuff at all. I can I can get my own natural sourced. And I just this is hilarious. I mean, before I was a mad and hurt, but now this is this is like happy day <laughs> because this is this has become its own joke. Yeah. And what's the best part about this is that all of us that are naturally sourcing it in our backyards are saying, hey, I've got it. Come get some from us. And everyone has dropped big market and is going mm -hmm. to their local sources. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it seems to to have stabilized at around $60. Uh, currently, it closed at $60.53 today. Down oh my gosh. almost 2% from oh, uh, yesterday, Lord. I believe. It got all the way down to, let's see, uh, what was the low? Yeah, the it today's bottom out point at 10, 10 a.m. I believe it's ten a.m. Eastern was fifty nine sixty six, and then it's wobbled around and ended the day at sixty dollars and fifty cents. So it's probably going to continue trending a bit downward. So February is going to be support your local farmer's market month. 
<laughs> yes, support yeah. support support your third party creators, your yeah. local gaming stores. Yeah. Don't buy online unless they are third party creators. Uh oh, I check love it. Yes, I love uh it. use whatever um mapping program in your local area to find small game shops and support them because they have been hit the hardest by Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro's shady dealings. Oh, I love this. I love this. Yeah. I mean, ha is, Hasbro's product so quality has been dropping for the last, like, five or six years. I mean, like, last week I was so sad about this whole thing. Yeah. And now it's like, nope. Yeah. We're making our own strawberry muffins, damn it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I am so happy now. Alright. This is totally awesome. This is just totally awesome. Oh, it is. Alright, so... I think... Uh, we're at... Yeah, just over 45 minutes this time. So let's go ahead and move on to the third party creator spotlight for tonight. And I'm going to say again um, for anyone who may not have listened to our whole episode one or didn't take a look in the description. Uh, to please give a look to the Cantrip cast. Those guys are great uh, small YouTube creators. They've, they've got what looks like some pretty awesome products. Uh, they had a t-shirt when I looked last time that had sold out. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take a look at my bookmark. I love how it... There we go. <laughs> Let's see, they still go... Scott, we need to make a t-shirt next. Alright, they, they are still doing a sale, but it's not the everything's on fire sale. So, I... Good. I Good. Which is great, because they re really do still... You know, need need support. They they've got a codec of quests, a a dungeon master screen, a map of their campaign, and a a campaign oh, book. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's what we're working on next. Is um, yeah, we got a creatures and maps and. And stuff for our campaign worlds. Yeah. Translating our campaigns into our new tabletop system. Yeah. But we also, all of us really need to give a good thorough look over uh, the backbone that Scott has been working on for the last uh, month. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure it's uh, properly edited and stuff, so so that it's a good, fully fledged alpha system. Uh, yeah, it it yeah. is currently up on our website, so if anyone wants to take a look, download it, uh, provide feedback. There is an email yes, address yes, to please. do so, and definitely, if you take a look at it and you spot any errors or anything. Do send Veen back via our contact form, and we'll get the edits in as quickly as possible, and we'll make a note if we have made uh, changes on that page. If we've... Yeah, but, um, 
J just a little bit of an explanation on on what this is. It is called the Arkansas Open Role Playing System, or AORPS for short. There is no license. There is no copyright. This is a core system that you build off of. You come up with your own races, classes, spells, techniques. Um, it can be set in any um, genre, any world line, whatever you want to do with it. I want people to build their own system with it, a system that they can sell, a system that they can even give away. And yeah, the, totally the up to point, the, the person building off this, it. Yep, and the whole point of this, my hope, is that it gets into enough hands, gets into enough creators' hands that they can just create their own stuff, create their own their own um, unique role-playing systems using this backbone so that way that it just starts slowly burning away at the competition known as Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Yeah, making, making them a them small die, fish in a big I want, sea. I want, I want them to... I want that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro to have actual competition. Yes. Yeah, yes. beyond Paizo. I want to turn this into like a public library and have have amazing stories, amazing worlds, and, you know, really cool characters. Yeah, it's for... That you can come to for free. <laughs> well, some of it, of... Our, our own sandbox is going to have a license to for you to play you going to need a license to play in we haven't totally decided what that license is going to look like though it it will probably either be a in a system reference license under under creative commons or it'll be something that we ourselves come up with somewhat maybe somewhat similar to what Wizards did back in 2000 with the open game license, but with the proper ling legal language to prevent uh, nefarious deeds yeah. of, of, of potential future ownership. Yep, but, if we uh, ever I end just, up selling. I just want to reiterate that's, I just want to reiterate that's for a role playing system that we make using AORPS is the backbone. Yeah. Um, yes. AORPS is for free for anybody. It's currently up on our website, arcosortt.com. And that'll be. Slash AORPS. And it is and available it... now. Yes. It, it is available. And that's for anyone who's wanted to make a tabletop role playing system and not had the first idea of where to start if you're wanting to do it with. Uh, using 20-sided dice and, you know, the other polyhedrals, polyhedrals that everyone's used to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what just, was it um, Cobalt a, called a them? The platonic home. polyhedrals and the D10, but that really isn't a platonic. But nobody cares. <laughs> Oh, you have another creator that you've that you've linked over here, and I'm absolutely loving their stuff. Yes, um, his all right. His name is Rene Pierre. I I am I am so sorry, Rene, but I would totally butcher your last name. I I don't want to even try. <laughs> It could, it could be uh, Deshaies, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, I would totally butcher it. I'm, I'm not gonna try. Uh, he's the game designer for uh, Fari RPG. Him and uh, Galen Peugeot. His il is the illustrator, and I just happened to be scrolling, you know, through Twitter and. He posted up a, hey, does anybody want to do a real play of this game I've got? It's kind of a, a solo Metroidvania style tabletop. And I was like, I'd be interested. I mean, regardless if you even pay attention to my reply, I'll, I'll give you a shout out on my podcast. And 
he he sent me a link to his press kit which awesome songs and i um i did post a copy of the pdf in our uh newscast chat if if when you uh get home garnet you want to take a look at it on your computer okay it it looks yeah and he said that you know Uh, if you want to set aside a couple hours and go through the roles, it's got the character sheet in it along with the color format image of of the uh, front cover for the game. Okay. And it's you know it's got all the roles in it, and it looks. It looks really good. When I was going through uh, the description that's at the bottom of the character sheet, to me, the way it reads is... It, it reminds me of Journey. You know, the, yeah, that's, that's okay. the first thing I was thinking of. Um, real quick, because I'm, I'm pretty sure Which that he's a... allow us to, to give a quick synopsis. Yeah, he um, he said a quick overview. Um, yeah, from, um, the, from from his from what from the what I'm packet. seeing. Re- yeah, from what I'm seeing and reading, <clears throat> um, it has you know tables of uh, different dice rolls of different um, areas and stories. But um, yeah, it's just in, a two d six and a regular pack of playing cards. Yep, yeah, but the the um, bottom of quote unquote the character sheet. It says, for generations, the departed have been trapped in their undead form all across the land of Penumbra, tormenting and plaguing our world. The firelights, once guided the dead through the veil, have vanished, but there is still hope. Their last cocoons have just hatched right under the watchful eyes from the, of the protectors. You are the last of the firelights. You must traverse through the swarms of lifeless creatures, ignite all the land's old beacons, and lead the dead through the veil once more. Oh, and no. It it look like it literally looks like a, yeah you a can very see, very you know I, I just journey. popped up a little bit of it yeah it, yeah, it, it looks it's, fantastic it's, I would love to play it I would love to actually have um, a group of you if you would all want to um, since he wants to he wants a, a one shot just to see how it goes I would love to have. Uh, a one shot with you guys playing this. Okay. Like, I, I think it would be ac- actually a lot of fun. Okay. Not sure how we do virtual ca- playing cards, though. Oh, trust me. I have my ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm going to go over to. So, would we try nope, to. It's not reintroduce um my brain just froze um rogue life um that is a a different system that i worked on that's a, a different a system while back yeah okay. that that um, that's a different card system I think it's going to take a little more um, workshopping before we're ready to put that one back out. Yeah, okay. the, one, the one thing that I'm really impressed with um, by um, uh, René Pierre is uh, th- he's coming out with a role, uh, role-playing system called Stoneburner. Yes. Um, and uh, from what I can see, it looks fantastic. It's uh, The only way I can describe it is like um sci-fi role playing tabletop or so or yeah um sci-fi role playing TTRPG where everybody you play as is a dwarf which is fine by me I, I love dwarves but um it's like dead space meets doom awesome um the the description of it is um um Borker long neck of the house of grand rock has passed away and you're his only dis- or only surviving relative and his will barker has bequeathed unto you the cursed minds of the long belt a dilapidated settlement and the leadership of the house of grand rock 
However, other dwarf houses seek to overthrow you and take control of the valuable materials hidden deep within the old tunnels. Or the, those cold tunnels, sorry. To complicate matters further, most of the mine's galleries are inaccessible due to them being haunted by fire-spitting demons from the underworld. Cleanse, rebuild, survive. I love it! And so you're, you're literally the head of a... the head of a group of dwarves on a freaking mining ship that's going to this uh, cluster of, of asteroids that you need to rebuild a colony on. <laughs> That is awesome. While you mine and demon hunt, and it's just oh, this yeah. it'd be so the, much fun. Like, I can't wait for this one to come out. Yeah, it's. I just got a picture of soon dead gun abided in my head, <laughs> just running <laughs> balls yeah, but, um, to the wind in the hole. <laughs> but it says inspired by inspired by Doom, the Expanse, and Deep Rock Galactic. It that has a survival. Is cool. It has a survival-based core system, uh, player-facing mechanics, perfect for GM less or solo play, meaning one GM and one player. Um, yeah. Fast and highly thematic, highly thematic character creation. Five character kits, including the striker, the sinker, the sounder, the spell, the spell winder, and the stanchion. Um, rules for okay. no. Rule, rules light mechanics for combat looting, crafting, and even community management, and numerous ways to generate badass space dwarves, dangerous <laughs> mines, and fire spitting creatures. Yes, oh, and yes. that one's going to be going up on Kickstarter, I believe he said on March 24th. Okay, um, I will look some, out for that. Yeah, and with some of the character art that they have. And I'll be it, putting a, a, a link to this product uh down in the description and from there you should be able to get to his his twitter to check out his de what's essentially his dev blog um and that'll that'll give you an idea of where what firelights is i've uh put up a banner image for the color version of the title card for firelights on on our thing yep okay um, also with uh, took me a Stone few Burner, seconds. With, with Stone Burner, the only the last thing I'm going to say is the way the character art looks for the dwarves is like they are is like a mix between D and D and Warhammer 40k. Uh, that would be Ooh. advanced second edition D and D because those were all black and white images. I know, yeah. but I'm just, I'm yeah, just but the, the, with the, the style the it, somewhat yeah the. The somewhat chonky style of, of the of Warhammer. Of case Space Marines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It's like, I, I can't wait for that. Mainly because, With number lots one, of I gold love highlights. Dwarves, and number two, it's sci-fi. And number three, it just, it looks like it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm excited. And, and the other awesome thing, um, the Firelight uh, solo game, it, it's going to... When it releases, it's going to be uh, six dollars U.S. I believe. Okay, I can actually do that. Yeah, and like I said, I it's um, that. it's supposed to go live on February seventh. Yep, and, and just which, to let which you for know, us I went it will be ahead. tomorrow. Yeah, I I went on ahead and. Uh, and uh, saved it on on Kickstarter. So whenever it goes live, I'm gonna check it out, and uh, I'm definitely gonna pre-order a copy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, um, once we get it in our hands, I guess we'll be uh, doing a, a review. I'll 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 let Renee um, a know that we mentioned him in our podcast. That it's uh, toward the end of it. And. B that you really liked his stuff and you're 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 really psyched psyched about it to come everything to come out. Well I I I like I like trying out new role playing systems. That's just it's been oh, kind yeah. of my thing. Um I, I even if you remember, there was this one point in time when um Sacred Two released on PC mm -hmm. and they had a like super deluxe edition that came with a role play, a tabletop role playing system. Like I, a, I don't remember book. that part. 
yeah um and so it's somewhere in the house i don't know where it is but i do have a copy of their role-playing system we should find it yeah and, and we should should tell uh wendy's and old spice guy that they they, they can publish under ogl 1.0 a their their role-playing systems yeah again that that they're safe to do so because i i really wanted to get a copy of the wendy's tabletop and the the arby's one when they did that but they sold out way too quick yeah which was sad i kind of hope they'll they'll uh that people could convince them to put them up again maybe in a, a less limit, limited run especially right now they they would definitely make they bank, would bank. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they would definitely make bank but that was that was a few years ago i'm excited i'm excited yep all right um i think we're gonna wrap up here and okay. this no no outtakes this time besides you know the my, minor technical glitches <laughs> all right um thanks for everyone that uh stuck around and watched to the end uh, if you like this kind of stuff we'll be doing this and when as soon soon as i can i i will be be getting our real play campaigns up here on on our youtube and you know so like, subscribe, share the video, all, all, all those YouTube algorithm things. And yeah. uh, thank you guys for listening. Bye. Bye. Uh, oh, and, and uh, keep adventuring, everybody. Night. <laughs> yes, stop.